Yo, what's up guys and welcome to Santa Marta, Colombia. I just moved here and this is going to be my new home for a few months now. And so I want to check in with you guys and get back on YouTube. And today I'm going to talk with you guys about five things that I hate about being a digital nomad. So I usually talk to you guys a lot about all the things that I love and all the fun and dandy and awesome things about being a digital nomad. Well, today I want to be a little bit more real with you guys and share with you some things that aren't so fun about being a digital nomad. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. And so first things first, um, if you're traveling to a foreign country and you're a native English speaker, for example, well, you're not going to be able to, one, talk to the people very well because of the language barriers. And so as a result, this is the first point, you're never really going to know who you can trust, okay? And so if you are like me and you can, más o menos, habla español, it still isn't going to be very helpful because there's a lot of words and phrases and slang that you really just aren't going to be able to pick up on if you are not a native speaker of that language, okay? And so since you're not going to be able to talk to people in your native tongue, um, it's not going to hit you as well what they're saying. Um, yes, you might still be able to uh, translate what they're saying into your native language, but you're going to have a hard time having conversations with people and have them actually speak to your heart and your native language in what you know best, okay? And so that's why it's hard to figure out who you're going to be able to trust and who you're not going to be able to trust simply because you're going to have a difficult time conversating with people. Secondly, okay, I want to talk with you guys about visa extensions. This is one that is kind of a pain. Um, for example, uh, here in South America, you know, at least in Peru and Colombia, um, you're allowed to stay in the country for six months. Basically, no questions asked, okay? However, uh, not too long ago, I went to go and get my visa renewed here in Colombia. I wanted to get three more months, and I ended up having to wait in line for three hours. And I was almost starting to suspect, suspect that it was almost a game because there was only like five, six people there, and I was waiting for three hours just to talk for one person, have them put a stamp on my visa. Very frustrating, and I would imagine that Colombia is not the only place in the world that that's going to be that way. And so that's the second thing that is kind of annoying about being a digital nomad, is having to go into immigration and have them check out your visa and constantly be having to deal with immigrations in general. In your native country, you don't have to deal with any of that. And you're just already a permanent, full-time citizen. Thirdly, um, it's kind of the repetitive questions that people always ask you. And specifically, uh, one in particular, or two in particular, excuse me. And that is, why are you here? And when are you going back? So, most people don't even know what a digital nomad is, and they have no idea what I'm doing, or why I'm here, or what I'm doing while I'm here, and so they're almost confused if they see me there for a longer than a week, for example, because there's a lot of travelers who just come for a few days and then leave. However, if you're a digital nomad, you're going to be there for months, and then pretty soon people are going to be thinking, hey, are you moving here? When are you going back? Why are you here? And it can get kind of annoying to answer those questions. And so to answer those questions, why are you here? Well, I'm here to work and to get a ticket to the next place that I want to go to. When am I going back to the United States? Well, I don't know, okay? And it can be very hard, if it's not your native language, to be able to adequately and eloquently explain your point of view when they're asking these sort of deep questions. And specifically, another question, let's just go ahead and run into this. If they start asking about what I think about American politics, well, I don't really want to talk about American politics. And so that's the third thing, um, just the repetitive questions that really just get kind of aggravating to answer, especially if they don't really understand what I am or what I'm doing in the first place. And so next time uh, you think about becoming a digital nomad, start thinking about all the different things that you do for work that you're going to have to be able to describe to people and say, oh yeah, I do this, I do a little bit of this, um, I do this as well, and I also make money doing that. And um, yeah, so I kind of just work for a living and travel country to country and um, yeah, and I don't really know when I want to go back. And these sort of things can be very hard to say if you're not very good at the language of the country that you are in. So that's why they're they just repetitive questions. And so that brings me to my fourth point, which is always having to find a new place to stay. Okay, so this happened pretty recently. Um, yes, this is kind of the whole point of becoming a digital nomad in the first place, is that you can always be traveling city to city and finding a new place to stay, but it can also get a little annoying always having to find a place to stay. So, for example, uh, when I came here to South of Martha, um, it took me a week to find my place. Well, actually, take it back. It took me three days to find my place, okay? But then it took me another 
four days, five days, um, I don't know the exact number, but it took me a while to get internet up and going. And so if you need internet for work, like any digital nomad probably does, it can get a little frustrating always having to move and then think about how you're going to get your internet taken care of, for example. And so usually when I'm finding a place to stay, I don't have like the, the most luxurious standards of accommodations, you know, the nicest place possible. And honestly, um, I've started to carry enough stuff around that, you know, basically any sort of problem that I could run into in probably the worst one-star hotel room, well, I could build it up to be pretty decent just because I've started to figure out how to always be moving from place to place and home to home and having to move in general. And then the fifth thing that kind of frustrates me about being a digital nomad is that you're almost like an ambassador for your country and people will use you, you, as a reference for how they treat all future expats in general. And so how do I know this? Well, I can kind of pick it up by on how people treat me and how they talk about other people who are Americans, for example. And so, you know, for example, in Peru, there's a pretty bad stereotype of the people going in there just having a lot of money and treating the natives like trash. And so it kind of resulted in some of the natives treating me like trash because they expected me to be just like Jim Bob who came over and treated them poorly. And so if you are a digital nomad and you're traveling to another country, keep that in mind that people may not know anything about the culture of your country and they're going to use you as an example of how they will think about your country and the people of your country. And so just try to do your best and set a positive example. But really, that's all I have for you guys. That's my five things that I hate about being a digital nomad. And like I said, I'm living here in Santa Martha full time down here for at least a few months. And so I will be making more videos like this. And so glad to be back with you guys. And I hope you guys are having a great day. Peace.